Chapter 31 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Startled Shao Chihai Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios, Brother Hai Are you alright? Shao Chihai shook his head. I'm fine. How are Little Dong and the others? Are they doing well? After recuperating for another month or so, Xiao Qihai finally got much better and could get out of bed. Jiang Feng, the short dot-haired man who had been following him, had completely recovered. Therefore, he had gone to Xiao Qihai's hometown to inquire about the situation of the Xiao family's children. It was all right when I went to ask around. Sister dot in dot law is taking care of them at home, but it seemed like your daughter was sent away by auntie once. It was sister dot in law who brought her back. Xiao Qihai's expression sank. Little Bei was sent away. Even though they had sent back news of his passing, it had only been a short time. How could they have sent Little Bei away? It wasn't like the Xiao family couldn't afford to raise a child. Everything else aside, the money that he had sent back over the years should be enough to raise the children as long as they used it wisely. How could she? Xiao Qihai knew that Zhao Lan wasn't as good as he had imagined, but he hadn't expected her to give Little Bei away. Of course, he hadn't expected Mu Jingjia to bring her back either. Besides, she was currently still taking care of the children. You said Mu Jingjia is still taking care of the children and hasn't returned to her maternal home. Yes, I remember your instructions. I didn't dare go directly to the Great Eastern Village. However, I found the people from your village who came to the market and asked around. Jiang Feng nodded affirmatively. Xiao Qihai had a complicated expression on his face. Everything had exceeded his expectations since he had woken up after escaping death a few months ago. To think that Zhao Lan, whom he had thought would raise the children no matter what, had actually sent Little Bei away. On the other hand, Mu Jingjia, whom he had married by accident and hadn't pinned any hopes on, hadn't returned to her parents' home. Instead, she had stayed on at the Xiao residence to take care of the children and had even brought Little Bei back. He'd thought she would have gone home long ago. It was also right for her to go home. Although they'd gotten married, they had only been husband and wife in name. His most memorable impression of Mu Jingjia was her striking hair, eyebrows, and red lips. He couldn't remember what her face looked like in detail. Xiao Qihai snapped out of his reverie and saw Jiang Feng hesitate to speak. What else is there? Just tell me. I can take it. Actually, I also heard a piece of news. I don't know if it's true or not, but it's said that the Xiao family split up the family assets. Your younger brother and your children got their share, and auntie is now living with your oldest brother. Xiao Qihai's first thought was that this was absurd. How is that possible? How can they split up the family assets when they're just kids? Previously, eldest brother Xiao had told him that they were brothers with an unbreakable bond. Even though he knew that what he'd said was a little fake, it wasn't so fake that they'd need to split up the family assets, right? How were they going to survive now that they had been left on their own? Jiang Feng touched his nose. That's what I heard. When he reached this point, he looked a little troubled. Brother Hai, I know that given our current situation, it isn't appropriate for our family to hear from us. I'm aware that knowing this will harm them, but as long as the person who receives the news is reliable, can we do it subtly? Xiao Qihai frowned. No, the less they know, the better. When everything is settled, I will return. When that time comes, they will know. Jiang Feng was put in a difficult position. Can't we even tell Sister Dot in law? Why don't you tell her in secret? Xiao Qihai gave him a strange look. There's no benefit in her knowing. Actually, he was also worried. According to the feedback, Mu Jingjia seemed to have changed from the person he remembered her to be. However, he still wouldn't trust her with such an important matter. If it was Mu Shui, he might be able to trust her. When he thought of Mu Shui, Xiao Qihai's gaze darkened. The two of them hadn't been fated to be together ultimately. 
There was no point in thinking about it now. Xiao Qihai was depressed, but Jiang Feng was worried about him. Brother Hai, a husband and wife are one. It would be good for her to know. What's wrong with you today? Why are you acting so strangely? Xiao Qihai was puzzled. I, Jiang Feng felt aggrieved. It's all because of you. If you don't tell sister Dot in law, what if she marries someone else? She was such a good woman. Brother Hai was already dead, yet she was still helping raise his children, who weren't related to her by blood. What a wonderful person. If he accidentally let her slip by, he would regret it for life. Brother Hai, people aren't dumb. Everyone can tell that Sister Dot in law is a good person, so it's not surprising that someone noticed her. Someone has already proposed to Sister Dot in law. I heard that it's a driver from the county. Everyone in your village said that this man is very eligible. If it weren't for the fact that Sister Dot in law still remembers you, she might already have remarried. She might even have had a baby in her stomach already. Jiang Feng felt like the emperor wasn't anxious, but a eunuch was. He had really expected better from Xiao Qihai. Xiao Qihai was stunned again. O.org someone had proposed marriage to Mu Jingzhe. A driver from the county to boot. And Mu Jingzhe had chosen not to marry when this man was so eligible. Did she really turn him down? Xiao Qihai couldn't help confirming it. Yes, she said no. Sister Dadin, law is really devoted to you. Jiang Feng thought that Xiao Qihai was finally anxious. Brother Hai, you must cherish her. Sister Dadin, law must have been under a lot of pressure not to accept this time. What if an even more eligible, good man shows up? Sister Dadin, law might be forced to remarry in the end. Upon seeing Jiang Feng's anxious look, Xiao Qihai swallowed back the words, there's nothing I can do if she really remarries. Jiang Feng didn't know that he and Mu Jingzhe had only been married for a short time and thus didn't have any feelings for each other at all, nor did he know that they had yet to consummate their marriage. He was anxious for him, so it was normal for him to be afraid that Mu Jingzhe would remarry. However, he couldn't say these things to Jiang Feng. That night, Xiao Qihai suffered from insomnia. He would be lying if he said he didn't feel terrible about Zhao Lan's actions. That was his biological mother. And those kids. The ones Xiao Qihai couldn't let go of the most were the children. In the past, they had been the ones constantly on his mind. Tonight, perhaps because Jiang Feng had said too much about Mu Jingzhe, his mind was filled with thoughts of Mu Jingzhe. He didn't know what she was thinking or why she had changed. To think she'd actually stayed behind to take care of the children. Could, what Jiang Feng had said be true? Did she really like him? Ahem, Xiao Qihai felt a little hot. He thought that if Mu Jingzhe didn't remarry, he would definitely not let her down when he returned. As he thought about this, he started to feel anxious. Should he speed up? What if she remarried? Xiao Qihai, who had realized what he was thinking, straightened his face. He wasn't anxious. He was merely worried about the children. A large portion of the subsidies that Xiao Qihai had received after retiring from the army had been used by him to help his comrades. In addition, he wasn't completely crippled, so he had given up the work the army had assigned to him to someone in more difficult circumstances and had decided to do business by himself. His comrades believed in him and had come to work with him. Later, they'd started a transportation company. Because they were creditworthy and offered competitive prices, business was good. However, since their business was doing well, it was unavoidable that some people would consider them an eyesore. Many hooligans were also looking for trouble. They naturally weren't afraid of such hooligans, but something had happened later on. There were certain powers involved in this matter. If they'd turned a blind eye to this, it would have been fine. However, they couldn't do so. Furthermore, those people had refused to let them off, which had resulted in the subsequent accident. The matter wasn't over yet, and there was still danger. That was why, 
although Xiao Qihai had only been severely injured and unconscious, news of his passing had been sent back. This was also a last resort. It was safer to announce that Xiao Qihai was dead. At the time, he had been no different from a dead man. Everyone had said that he wasn't going to make it. Unexpectedly, he had managed to pull through. However, even though he had made it through, he couldn't go back until the danger was eliminated. Chapter 32 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Counseling Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios in the Great Eastern Village, no one knew that Xiao Qihai was still alive. The next day, the principal gave Xiao Dong and Xiao Xi an answer regarding their request to skip a grade. If your results are outstanding and you perform well in all aspects, you can apply to skip a grade. However, your current problem isn't the second dot grade exam. If you skip grades and go to the third grade, you will directly enter the third grade and will have to study. The problem is that the first semester of the third grade has already passed, and the next semester already started long ago. Can you keep up? If you can't keep up with the third dot grade curriculum, then skipping a grade isn't worth it. The principal was actually quite considerate when it came to his students. Normally, we don't recommend skipping grades because teachers don't just teach what's in the textbooks. They impart other stuff as well. Xiao Dong and Xiao Xi agreed with the first part of his speech, but when they heard the last sentence, their expressions became a bit intrigued. After all, Zhang Fei only taught what was in his textbooks. They had never seen him teach anything else. The principal's words made them even more determined. The final conclusion of this discussion was that a grade dot skipping examination would be held first. If they passed, he could consider approving their request, but only if they could keep up with the third dot grade curriculum. In the end, Xiao Dong boldly said, then include the content of the third grade's first semester in the assessment, as well as the progress exam of our current semester. You can allow us to skip a grade if we pass everything. Seeing that they had made up their minds, and considering the fact that it was rare for the school to have such brilliant students, the principal agreed after careful consideration. The grade dot skipping test was scheduled to take place two weeks later. During this period, Xiao Dong and Xiao Xi were allowed to revise by themselves. They weren't required to attend Zhang Fei's class. If they encountered something they didn't understand, they could ask the other teachers. The principal could also teach them himself. It was impossible for ordinary students to finish more than one semester of the third grade within two weeks, but Xiao Dong and Xiao Xi happily accepted the challenge. Mu Jingzhe had no objections. She believed that it shouldn't be a problem for them. After the agreement was made that day, Xiao Dong and Xiao Xi took the third dot grade textbook the principal gave them and immediately began to study. Mu Jingzhe was a university student, and her school wasn't too bad. She shouldn't have a problem with third dot grade textbooks. For the first time ever, she asked if they needed her help. Xiao Dong hesitated for a second before nodding. Okay. The original Mu Jingzhe hadn't been as knowledgeable as Mu Shui and hadn't gone to high school. However, she had at least finished middle school. Hence, they decided to let her try teaching them. Unexpectedly, Mu Jingzhe knew everything and was excellent at teaching. BDNV she was much better than Zhang Fei. Xiao Dong and Xiao Xi were amazed at first, but later on, they started to listen attentively. Xiao Nan, Little Bei, and Xiao Wu gathered beside them and listened quietly. To them, the curriculum was a bit over the top, but they liked listening to Mu Jingzhe. They felt that what she said was very interesting and relaxing. From time to time, she would even say things they didn't know. Mu Jingzhe, who had seen modern fancy tutoring and had also tutored the younger kids at the orphanage, found these tutoring sessions quite easy. However, she was also amazed deep in her heart. Big shots were indeed impressive. They were learning at an incredibly rapid rate, so much so that she almost suspected that they had a photographic memory. This learning ability made Mu Jingzhe, who was an ordinary person, very envious. At night, because there was no light, they couldn't continue studying, 
so they recited poems instead. The learning atmosphere was great. When it was time to sleep, Little Bay grabbed her chubby little feet and asked Mu Jingzha while lying in bed, Auntie, why don't you become a teacher? You teach as well as a teacher. This was Little Bay being tactful. She actually felt that some teachers weren't even as good as Mu Jingzha. Mu Jingzha laughed. If you like it, I'll teach you more often in the future. But I can't be a teacher. Why not? You teach so well and you know so much. In Xiao Bei's mind, anyone who was impressive could be a teacher. However, she didn't have enough educational qualifications. Without the necessary educational qualifications, she couldn't very well tell people that she had acquired a teacher's license in her past life so they'd let her be a teacher. The next day was a Saturday and it was still a day of lessons. Xiao Dong and the rest realized that Mu Jingzha could not only teach Chinese and mathematics but could also teach them about nature and morals. She knew how to draw as well. Because the nature and moral education tests didn't factor into their results, the teachers basically didn't care about these two subjects. The curriculum simply had the students study these two subjects on their own. Those who liked to study would take a look at the book. Many people would just flip through it casually, or they might not even do that. They hadn't expected that Mu Jingzha would not only impart knowledge on these subjects to them but would also teach them a lot of things. Besides learning to love their country, the children also had a small dream in their hearts. They wanted to visit the capital in their life. They also saw some stories of warriors protecting their country in Xiao Qihai, who used to be a soldier, was mentioned. They felt very proud. In the past, they would look forward to resting after class, but not with Mu Jingzha. They felt that time passed in the blink of an eye when she was teaching them. When Mu Jingzha said that she wanted to cook, they were reluctant to part with her. They couldn't help but chase after Mu Jingzha to help wash the potatoes and ask her questions. The furthest people from the great eastern village went was the county city. They didn't even know any places further than that. There was only one black dot and dot white television in the entire village, so they knew very little about the outside world. There were just a few teachers, and the furthest they had been was the city. How could they compare to Mu Jingzha, who had come from the modern era? She had been to many places in the country, and her knowledge was much greater than that of the villagers of the great eastern village. She thus widened the horizons of those kids by sharing. The children looked forward to seeing the world beyond this village. Seeing that they were interested, Mu Jingzha told them more. After dinner, she asked them to rest. Xiao Shi awkwardly took out his precious comic book and asked Mu Jingzha to help him mend the missing piece of paper. Okay, but I'm not a professional artist. Don't blame me if I don't paint well. I won't. Xiao Shi immediately said. Mu Jingzhe drew some simple pictures based on Xiao Shi's instructions and gestures. In the afternoon, she talked to them about nature. She shared quite a bit of knowledge about nature, as well as thermal expansion and contraction, Earth's gravitational buoyancy, and so on. The scope covered was quite broad, and Xiao Nan obviously liked it a lot. He pricked up his ears to listen to whatever Mu Jingzhe was saying. After being caught, he would turn around as if nothing had happened. When Mu Jingzhe discovered this by chance, she secretly laughed in her heart. This was a genius, a future scientific researcher. It was normal for him to be interested in these things. Seeing that they were interested, Mu Jingzhe spoke more. Two days passed quickly. Mu Jingzhe taught them while making hair ornaments and couldn't help but complain that time passed too quickly. The children were having a lot of fun learning from her. Before they realized it, they were already surrounding Mu Jingzha like little chicks foraging for food around their hen mother. When it was Monday, Xiao Nan and Little Bei had to go to school. The two of them dilly dot dallied and had to be urged twice before they headed to school. If possible, they wanted to stay at home and study with Mu Jingzha. It was more interesting than going to school. Unfortunately, that was naturally impossible. When they returned at noon, they were followed by a guest. Mu Xue was with them. 
Chapter 33 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Forced herself on him translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios everyone at school was gossiping about Zhang Fei, as well as Xiao Dong and Xiao Xi's application to skip a grade. Mu Xue felt that everyone had been looking at her strangely in the past two days. It was even more obvious when she returned to school. She had never thought that her good intentions would harm Xiao Dong and Xiao Xi, so she was troubled and sad. After hesitating the entire morning, Mu Xue made a decision. She followed Little Bei and her siblings back and volunteered to tutor them to make up for it. I can teach you guys at any time except during class hours. She felt much better after saying that. She didn't expect to be rejected. Thank you, Teacher Mu, but we can learn by ourselves. We have Auntie Mu teaching us, so we shan't trouble you. Xiao Shi politely declined, acting as his sibling's representative. Mu Xue didn't believe a single word he said. Did Mu Jingzhe have what it took to teach them? Not everyone could be a teacher. She felt that Xiao Dong and Xiao Shi still blamed her, so they'd randomly found an excuse. Mu Xue lowered her head and left the Xiao family. She was very upset. When she returned home and saw old Madame Mu, she poured out her troubles to her with red eyes. I didn't mean to, she said. But I think they blame me. I know it's normal for them to blame me, but I just want to make up for it. Old Madame Mu didn't like the children, but her heart ached for her granddaughter. If they blame you for this, you don't have to care about them. You didn't do anything wrong. You were just too kind. After cursing Mu Jingzhe for a while, she wanted to call for Li Xiaodi and Mu Ting to scold them, but when she turned around, they were nowhere to be seen. The couple had gone to sell buns. Ever since the two of them had started to sell buns, old Madame Mu could no longer control them. Mu Xue was listless for two days. Tang Moling coaxed her during those two days, but she was still sad. In the end, he had no choice but to look for the Xiao family. This was Tang Moling's first time at the Xiao family's home. When he entered and saw the clean yet dilapidated courtyard, after comparing it to the house next door, he couldn't help but raise his brows. As if he had entered his own home, he walked in slowly. How are your lessons coming along? Can you understand what you're reading? Xiao Dong nodded. Xiao Shi asked, what's the matter? Why didn't you accept teacher Mu Xue's tutoring offer? She's very upset now. Tang Moling got straight to the point. I hope you can accept her help. Xiao Shi pursed his lips. But we really don't need it. You're clearly still blaming her. Tang Moling was amused. Don't be stubborn. It wasn't easy for me to convince myself to let her help you guys. Don't be ungrateful. We really don't blame her, but it's true that we don't need her help. We're doing fine with Auntie Mu's help, Xiao Shi replied. Tang Moling frowned. Why are you so insensible? He raised his hand and wrapped Xiao Shi's head, causing the latter to cry out in pain. Why did it hurt? It was because he had hit his head this morning. He had been through a lot recently. Xiao Shi had always been a person amenable to coaxing but not coercion. He didn't like Tang Moling's attitude at all, and the pain he felt on his head made him furious. Dut, move aside. He slapped Tang Moling's hand away. Now, Tang Moling was also in pain after being slapped. What's wrong with you? As he spoke, he grabbed Xiao Shi's hand. Let go. Xiao Dong quickly went to stop him. Mu Jingzhe, who had just come back and was holding Xiao Zhong's hand, saw Tang Moling bullying the two children. How could she allow this? Stop. Tang Moling was skilled, but Mu Jingzhe wasn't inferior either. Besides, given her strength, she easily subdued Tang Moling. Let go of me. Tang Moling's face was red from anger. No, just as Mu Jingzhe was about to ask why he had attacked the two children, she heard a short scream. She turned around and saw Mu Xue standing at the door. The things in her hands fell to the ground as she glared at Mu Jingzhe and Tang Moling. 
With eyes filled with disappointment and anger, she stomped her feet and ran out as she started to cry. Mu Jingzhe. Ha. Huh. Puzzled, she lowered her head to look at Tang Moling. What happened to her? Did she start crying because I hit you? Why didn't she come to help? She remembered that there was a plot in the book about Tang Moling being in danger and Mu Shui risking her life to block a knife for him. It was touching. Why would she turn around and run away? Or was she running away in tears? Was she that scary? She couldn't figure it out no matter how hard she thought about it. Tang Moling gritted his teeth. Look at your posture. What posture? Mu Jingzhe frowned. His words made one's imagination run wild. As she was complaining, she lowered her head and was left speechless. Upon looking at Tang Moling, who was pinned under her with his limbs firmly held in place, Mu Jingzhe finally realized what was going on. This posture indeed didn't seem so innocent. It's all because you kept struggling. Mu Jingzhe let go of Tang Moling's hands and stood up. The children were around, so it hadn't seemed appropriate for her to use moves such as shoulder throws, which required great movement. She had been afraid of hurting the children, so she could only suppress him on the spot. She had only remembered to move the children to the side to avoid accidentally injuring them, so she hadn't paid attention to her posture. Tang Moling got up and looked at his red wrist, his face switching color from white to green. He was furious about being held down by a woman, and he was also ashamed of the compromising position they had been in. Damn, their roles had been reversed. It shouldn't have been like this. He should have been the one holding Mu Jingzhe down. He should have been up there. Wait, what was he thinking? Tang Moling's face exploded from redness. These were conservative times. Although he was close to proposing marriage to Mu Shui, other than holding hands twice with her, they had done nothing else. But today, Mu Jingzhe had pinned him underneath her. He flew into a rage out of humiliation. Are you still a woman? I even helped you before. Is this how you repay me? Mu Jingzhe was speechless for a moment. Didn't you say the debt was written off with those buns? Besides, I saw you hitting those two kids. Who hit the children? They're the ones who hit me. Tang Moling was even angrier when he saw Little Bay. If I hadn't lent you my car, you would probably still have been God. Knows. Where? To think you even bit me. This little girl had taken advantage of the chaos to bite him. If he hadn't dodged, his thigh would have been bitten as well. You were bullying my brothers. With Mu Jingzhe around, Little Bei wasn't afraid at all. Tang Moling wanted to say something else, but he felt extremely uncomfortable around Mu Jingzhe. His heart flew to Mu Shui, who had run away, and he could only chase after her. Mu Jingzhe, if Xiao Shui misunderstands, I will never forgive you. Mu Jingzhe paused. I didn't do it on purpose. In any case, she decided to ask why he had come first. When she realized that Tang Moling had come because of Mu Shui, it seemed like it had been a misunderstanding and she shouldn't have hit him. Feeling helpless, she followed him. Mu Shui was so angry that she was crying in her room and didn't even open the door when Tang Moling came. Finally, Mu Jingzhe arrived. Seeing how anxious Tang Moling was, as though he was afraid that Mu Shui might do something foolish in there, Mu Jingzhe felt that she ought to do something. I'll help you knock down the door. Tang Moling. Dot. His face was full of question marks. Mu Jingzhe was already preparing. Mu Shui, move aside. Don't stand behind the door. I'm about to knock it down, before Mu Jingzhe could destroy the door, Mu Shui opened it. Tears welled up in her red eyes, making her look pitiful. Tang Moling's heart ached, but Mu Shui ignored him and only looked at Mu Jingzhe. When I was young, you used to steal all my clothes and shoes. Not only did you steal Xiao Qihai, but you're even trying to snatch Tang Moling. Do you want to snatch everything that belongs to me? Mu Jingzhe paused. No, don't get the wrong idea. I'm not trying to snatch him away from you. 
It was a misunderstanding. I, misunderstanding. I saw it with my own eyes. You even did it in front of the children. You simply, she couldn't bring herself to say that she had forced herself on him, but the scene had been extremely stimulating. It could be said that it had shocked her soul and turned her world upside down. She felt that Mu Jingjia had already laid her hands on Tang Moling. They had only held hands, yet Mu Jingjia had already touched him. She glanced at Tang Moling and felt that he was, dirty. Chapter 34 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Despise him. Translator. Atlas Studios Editor. Atlas Studios Mu Jingjia had a headache. No, Mu Shui, you've really misunderstood. She explained as quickly as she could. I'm really not interested in Tang Moling and have never wanted to snatch him away from you. I really don't have any feelings for him. Had she eaten too much, or was she so tired of living that she wanted to snatch away the male lead? She didn't have a death wish. Mu Shui still didn't believe her, so she gritted her teeth. I can swear that even if Tang Moling was the only man left in this world, I wouldn't take another look at him. Mu Jingzhe was forced to swear. Tang Moling stood aside, feeling completely ignored. He felt tired. Mu Jingzhe was also exhausted. It's really true. Mu Shui, I hope you believe me. At the moment, the scene was very similar to a scene of the female supporting character fighting with the female lead over the male lead. However, only God knew that Mu Jingzhe vehemently refused to have anything to do with the male and female lead. If one looked at the whole novel, one would notice that those related to them didn't meet a good end. Mu Jingzhe adopted her most sincere attitude and finally explained herself. She then left. Mu Shui and Tang Moling were left alone. Though Mu Shui had said that she had gotten the wrong idea about them before, she avoided Tang Moling's gaze. It was because she felt a subtle discomfort in her heart. Previously, Tang Moling had been so powerful and different from the people she had met. She had felt his charm completely then. However, Tang Moling, who was high and mighty in her heart, had been pinned down by Mu Jingzhe just like that. This made her feel a little awkward, as if something had collapsed in her. Tang Moling was also a little distracted. He couldn't help but think about Mu Jingzhe's words. She had said that she would not take another look at him even if all the men in the world died. He ought to be happy that she was helping him clear up this misunderstanding, yet he felt very awkward. Did she despise him? L.C. It had been like this before, and now it was like this again. Both of them were distracted and unhappy. After Tang Moling was subdued, the children were all eager to learn martial arts. They even fantasized about going to the Shaolin Temple to learn martial arts and become experts. Who had never dreamed of going to Shaolin and Wudang? Mu Jingzhe didn't say anything and even encouraged them to go when they had the chance. Going to different places would allow them to gain more knowledge. When the time came, they could regard it as traveling. Two days later, before dawn, Mu Jingzhe took a big bag full of goods and went out with Li Xiaodi and Mu Tang, who went to the market to sell buns. When they arrived in town, it was dawn. While Li Xiaodi and Mu Tang set up the stall, Mu Jingzhe went to the county and then the city. The trip to the city went quite smoothly. She handed over the goods and even received a new order. A foreign boss was even introduced to Mu Jingzhe. After negotiating, she went to get more supplies. This was a fruitful trip. By the time she reached the town, it was already dark. She then rushed home with Li Xiaodi and Mu Tang, who had been waiting for her. The next day, Mu Jingzhe took a look at the materials she had bought and took Xiao Zhong with her to hire some workers. Now that life was slowly getting better, people had spare money to buy accessories and hair ornaments. The more well Dot developed the place, the more obvious this was. Thanks to her rebirth and existing foundation, her hair ornaments sold well, so the number of orders would probably only increase in the future. Under the circumstances, she couldn't do this alone. She had to find some people to do it with her. This wasn't a problem. 
there were quite a few young ladies in the village who were skilled in needlework and threading. She could ask them to work for her and pay them a wage, it was a mutually beneficial arrangement. Mu Jingzhe had already made up her mind. She would ask three people to help her first and see how things went. This time, not only did she buy fabric for the head flower, but she also bought beads and other materials, as she wanted to develop an accessory line. She wanted to try making necklaces, bracelets, and earrings. Mu Jingzhe's search went very smoothly. The people she found were all good people with a reputation for being hardworking in the village. When they heard that they would be paid according to the number of pieces they made and would be given the money at the end of each day, they came over in spite of their doubts. The simple production process began. Mu Jingzhe was mainly responsible for matching the colors and coming up with the design and cutting, while her three workers would follow suit. The rest of the time, Mu Jingzhe continued to teach Xiao Dong and Xiao Shi at home. She was kept rather busy. However, it was good that the house was lively. It felt like Xiao Zhong had become more daring now. For the first two days, the villagers didn't know what Mu Jingzhe and the others were doing. They only saw the three of them going to Mu Jingzhe's house. Later on, they found out that they were going to Mu Jingzhe's house to help her make accessories and hair ornaments. Everyone was skeptical. However, the money that the three of them received at the end of each day was real. In a short time, Mu Jingzhe became the hottest topic of discussion in the village. Everyone was talking about the hair ornaments she made, and many people came up to ask if they could work for her as well. Mu Jingzhe calmed them down, saying she wasn't certain. After a few days, Mu Jingzhe left for the city before dawn. This time, she didn't return. Fortunately, Mu Jingzhe had said that this might happen. Xiao Qiang was also at home. The next day, Xiao Qiang couldn't help but come out when he saw that she hadn't returned even though it was almost afternoon. In the end, he saw Mu Jingzhe, who was covered in bags, in town. Thank goodness you came to pick me up. Otherwise, I really don't know how I would have gotten back. She was strong, but there were too many things. She couldn't carry all of them with her two hands. What is this? Materials. Mu Jingzhe's face was covered in sweat, but her eyes were sparkling. There's another big order. This time, it wasn't just hair ornaments. The necklaces she'd brought along were also sold out. She had received another order and had even been given a deposit. Mu Jingzhe felt that she could make a small fortune. Xiao Qiang borrowed a bicycle and, in combination with Mu Jingzhe's tremendous strength, they transported the items home. If everything goes well, we'll be able to buy a bicycle after this delivery. Life will be more convenient then. You can also ride it to deliver letters. Xiao Qiang was stunned. You mean you'll be buying it? No, I mean, are you interested in buying a bicycle together? It's a little difficult for me to buy a bicycle directly now, and it's difficult for you too. Why don't we buy a bicycle together first and then buy another one later? Mu Jingzhe's little plan had been implemented without a hitch. Xiao Qiang had a different feeling when he heard this, though. To him, it felt like the two of them were working hard for this small family and would be buying a bicycle together. This was the day he dreamed of. A couple supporting each other after marriage. His dream had been realized by Mu Jingzhe. Sure. He agreed and sped up, wanting the wind to cool him down. This time, Mu Jingzhe found another young lady to work for her. Now that she had four workers, other than designing and teaching them at the start, she no longer had to make the accessories herself. Even so, she was still very busy. It was only occasionally that she was able to focus on designing at night. The four young ladies, who came to her house to work, were completely relieved from doing housework. These days, their families would help them wash their clothes and call them when their meals were ready. They would come to work every morning and get off at night. This business wasn't a factory, but it resembled one. Because too many people came to ask if she was hiring, Mu Jingzhe had no choice but to temporarily close the door. 
Because of Mu Jingzhe and the four women who earned money every day, the atmosphere in the village had changed. Everyone wanted to earn money and eagerly waited for Mu Jingzhe to hire more people. In the blink of an eye, Mu Jingzhe, who'd originally had a bad reputation in the village, had become a popular figure. When Mu Jingzhe and Xiao Qiang really bought the bicycle, the atmosphere reached its climax. Their home was bustling with life these days. It was completely different from the miserable state everyone had imagined they would be in after they'd split up the family assets. Everyone was laughing at Zhao Lan and the eldest branch of the Xiao family. They had only split up the family assets shortly before this. If they hadn't done so, they would have been able to benefit from this business. Chapter 35 You are listening at NovelFull.audio It's shameful to act cute translator. Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios compared to Mu Jingzhe and her family, the eldest branch's days passed in a very ordinary way. The half-dot-blind fortune teller in the village read the fortune of Zhao Lan and eldest brother Xiao like a typical Monday morning dot quarterback he said that Zhao Lan's life had originally been pretty good. Although she'd suffered a little in her early years, she had been very blessed when it came to her children and grandchildren. Even though she had lost her son, she could have relied on her daughter dot in dot law and grandsons to lead a good life. The same applied to eldest brother Xiao. Although his younger brother was gone, he could have lived a good life by depending on his younger sister dot in dot law and nephews as long as he and his mother had a conscience. Alas, Zhao Lan and boss Xiao had no conscience, so their good luck had come to an end. Their fortune and good luck had been personally severed by them. In the past, Zhao Lan and Ba Xiao would have died laughing upon hearing something like this, and the villagers wouldn't have believed it either. Now, they had no choice but to believe it. Although the villagers knew that he was being a Monday morning quarterback, those who believed in fate felt that the fortune teller's words made sense. Everyone was gossiping about this, making Zhao Lan and her family quite furious. However, they had no chance to make up for it now. Mu Jingzhe had become the hottest topic in the village and would occasionally be on the village's trending list. However, no one paid attention to Xiao Dong and Xiao Shi's grade dot skipping examination. Anyway, the appointed time for the grade dot skipping exam came as scheduled. Not only would they be taking the second grade's final exam, but they would also be taking the third grade's first dot semester final exam and the second semester midterm exam. The principal chose to hold the exams on a weekend, when no one was at school. Mu Jingzhe woke up early to make breakfast. Apart from cooking eggs, she also deliberately fried dough dot sticks it was unknown when fried dough sticks and two eggs had become popular, but everyone was used to giving them to children before exams. Mu Jingzhe didn't forget this tradition. Here, this is Xiao Dong's. This is Xiao Xi's. Mu Jingzhe arranged them neatly. Xiao Dong and Xiao Shi's attention was attracted by the fried dough sticks. Fried dough sticks were common food, but the villagers rarely ate them because the cooking process used up too much oil and they couldn't afford to make them. The three little ones had never eaten them before. They only found them very fragrant. On the other hand, Xiao Dong and Xiao Shi vaguely remembered eating them when they were very young. At the time, they'd still had their mother and they had been living in the city. Why did you suddenly want to fry these? Because of your exam today. What does this have to do with the exam? 100 points. Xiao Shi answered his own question. This is 100 points. You guessed right. Mu Jingzhe snapped her fingers. Eat it. You will score 100 points after eating this. Xiao Dong and Xiao Shi felt a little strange in their hearts. Xiao Dong thanked her and started eating, but Xiao Shi was awkward. Even if we don't eat them, we can still get 100 points. After saying that, he started eating happily, his mouth full of grease. Mu Jingzhe thought that since she had already used up so much oil, she might as well fry more. Some of the dough sticks were left at home for the children in Xiao Qiang, and some were saved for the workers. She also took a portion to the school for the principal and the teachers. The principal and the others felt bad about taking the food, 
but Mu Jingzhe had already brought it. Besides, it was only some food, and the parents of other students would occasionally give them some food too, so they accepted it in the end. They ate the crispy fried dough sticks with satisfaction. While Xiao Dong and Xiao Xi were taking their exams, Mu Jingzhe went to the Mu residence and took some to Li Xiaodi in Mu Tang. Li Xiaodi was grinning from ear to ear, showing off to old Madame Mu. After eating a dough stick, she began to think. Jingzhe, do you think we can sell these fried dough sticks? Would anyone want to buy them? Of course. They can be sold. Mu Jingzhe nodded. Other than fried dough sticks, you can also try selling herbal tea. Eggs. I'm just afraid that you guys will have to work too hard. It's not hard. As long as we can earn money, we won't find it tough. Jingzhe, how do you make herbal tea eggs? I'll teach you later. Mu Jingzhe felt that Li Xiaodi and Mu Teng had been born to do business. When she returned to school, Xiao Dong and Xiao Xi's first exam had already ended. They were currently taking the second exam, and the teacher was already grading their work. They rested for a while at noon and took their next exam in the afternoon. They would finish all the exams in one day. The results didn't disappoint. Although they had one to two marks deducted in their Chinese literature paper, they scored 100 in their mathematics paper. Xiao Dong and Xiao Xi could finally hold their heads high. Zhang Fei came as well. He was still waiting to see Xiao Dong and Xiao Xi make a fool of themselves, but in the end, he was humiliated and he left dejectedly. The principal made a decision on the spot, Xiao Dong and Xiao Xi could skip grades as long as they submitted an application. The head teacher of the third grade was also there. He was short and he had only graduated from junior high, but he was a very nice person. Mu Jingzhe heaved a sigh of relief and got ready to leave with the children. However, Xiao Bei surprised her and asked the principal if she and Xiao Nan could skip a grade two. The two older brothers' success had opened a new world for them. They also wanted to skip grades. As for the reason they wanted to do so, it was naturally to save money. If they studied for two years less, they could save two years' worth of school fees. It was their goal to finish elementary school by spending the smallest amount of money. They didn't yet know how to make money, but they had found ways to save money. The principal said, you can't. Xiao Nan negotiated with the principal. Then we won't be taking the exam now. If we perform well in the second grade's end dot of dot semester exam, can you directly allow us to enter the third grade? Principal. Then you'll have to take the test and see. He hoped that the final exam of this semester would be difficult enough to teach them a lesson. We'll definitely pass. Xiao Bei glanced at Mu Jingzhe and waved her little fist to show her confidence. With Mu Jingzhe around, she wasn't afraid. Mu Jingzhe. She had an ominous feeling. Would she become a full dot time tutor in the future? As it turned out, her premonition was right. As soon as Xiao Bei returned home, she took out her textbook. Auntie, Auntie, please teach me and my brother. We also want to skip grades and join the third grade. Mu Jingzhe. She thought for a moment. She had only stayed behind as a nanny at first. Why was she also working as a part dot time tutor now? As Mu Jingzhe was struggling and hesitating, she felt someone tugging at her clothes. She looked down and saw Xiao Nan shaking her clothes. Please teach us. His voice was soft, and he accompanied it with an adorable smile. Mu Jingzhe couldn't help herself. Okay. As soon as she said that, she wished she could slap herself. After letting go of Mu Jingzhe, Xiao Nan tilted his head and wiped the non-existent sweat from his face, which felt numb. It was shameful to act cute, but it worked. That was why Xiao Nan had done it. Xiao Nan, who was acting cute for the first time, felt disgusted with himself. Fortunately, the cute act had worked on Mu Jingzhe. Mu Jingzhe seemed unable to resist cuteness. This was a secret Xiao Nan had just discovered. As long as Little Bei tilted her head and smiled at her, 
her gaze would soften. She also liked it when Little Babe bounced around. He had seen Mu Jingzhi's notebook. There were many messy scribblings in it, as well as records of accounts. There were also some small images drawn in the middle. Though her drawings consisted only of simple strokes, they captured the essence of Little Bay's appearance. There were lots of Little Bay's adorable antics, as well as some flowers Little Bay had picked for Mu Jingzhi. There were traces of all five siblings in the book, but most of the drawings were of Little Bay, followed closely by Xiao Wu. Then, there were some of Big Brother and Second Brother, and finally some of him. Little Five's clumsy, dumb actions and expressions made people laugh every time. Big Brother also looked cute in her notebook, and there was a funny version of Second Brother. As for him, there were relatively fewer pictures of him. By observing, Xiao Nan had sensed what Mu Jingzhi liked. He specifically targeted what Mu Jingzhi liked to achieve his goals. Chapter 36 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Plagiarism Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios By looking at Mu Jingzhi's notebook, Xiao Nan also noticed the changes in the five siblings. In the past, they used to be skinny, dirty, and clad in old clothing. However, during this period, they ate well and got to wear nice clothes. They also didn't have much to worry about. All of them had gained weight and even grown taller. In the past, Little Bay hadn't been in good health and used to always get sick. After Mu Jingzhi started taking care of them, she never got sick again and she bounced around every day. She also stopped following her brothers and even had a little friend of her own now. In combination with her ruddy complexion, she looked like an entirely different person. Xiao Wu used to follow them like a shadow. In the past, he had been timid and quiet, but he was much bolder now. He no longer shrank his body or lowered his head. Instead, he frequently raised his head and looked outside with sparkling eyes at Mu Jingzhi. He didn't know how to speak yet, but he was slowly relying on Mu Jingzhi and no longer followed his older siblings around. Xiao Wu was also mischievous. He would scare the chickens, which were getting bigger and bigger. Occasionally, he would imitate Mu Jingzhi and cover their eyes, silently letting them guess who he was. If they guessed correctly, he would let them go. This family had been silently changing because of Mu Jingzhi. She had never promised them anything, nor had she asked them to call her mother. It was as if she would leave at any time, but all this while, she'd silently supported them. She protected them from both the wind and rain. The family lived harmoniously. Every time young uncle came back, his eyes would sparkle. Thanks to the bicycle, he went home increasingly more often. Like them, he couldn't help but gaze at Mu Jingzhi and enjoy her cooking. Xiao Nan felt that he had blended in, but sometimes, he felt like he had been watching coldly from the sidelines. Xiao Nan stopped coldly watching from the sidelines, however, after Mu Jingzhi took them to conduct a small experiment. He liked nature and miraculous phenomena and he yearned for the scientific experiments that Mu Jingzhi had mentioned. Mu Jingzhi looked at Xiao Nan's shining eyes and felt immense pressure. He was indeed a genius, a future scientific researcher. One could begin to see the signs even at his young age. However, given their current financial condition, what she could teach him and give him was limited. Mu Jingzhi felt that she had to continue working hard when she saw Xiao Nan's hungry gaze. Only then could she show Xiao Nan more and impart more knowledge to him. Indeed, taking care of five children was no joke, especially when all five children were outstanding. She had heard that scientific research was expensive. Mu Jingzhi felt a headache when she saw Xiao Nan, but she felt better when she saw Xiao Dong. Fortunately, Xiao Dong would earn tons of money in the future and would be able to support his younger siblings so they could do things that they liked. However, Xiao Dong was still too young now, so she had to shoulder this responsibility for now. She just had to, persist a bit longer. Mu Jingzhi couldn't stop thinking about earning money. The production of her accessories had also entered a stable period, and the workers were creating new designs based on the materials she procured. In addition, 
her four workers were getting increasingly more familiar with the process. Because they had sped up, she didn't hire more people in the end. There was nothing the villagers could do about it. Among the four of them, Li Tao was the last to join the team. However, she was the fastest and the one with the deftest hands. Although she was married, her husband wasn't very reliable. Now that she was able to earn some money on her own, she was much more vibrant than before. She had a biological sister, Li Fang, who also wanted to work there. However, her hands weren't very deft, and she didn't have much talent, so she could only give up. Still, she was bold enough to come up with a different approach. She came to talk with Mu Jingjia about the possibility of getting goods from her. I'm just going to take some simple, cheap ones and set up a stall at the market to sell them. I've taken a look around. The accessories sold by the stalls in town aren't nearly as pretty or exquisite as yours, and they're not cheap either. I think I'll get good sales if I sell your stuff there. Li Fang finished speaking without stopping, then looked at Mu Jingjia nervously. Mu Jingjia nodded. Sure. She felt that Li Fang was quite bold and resolute. Some of the accessories she made were high dot quality and expensive, while others were simple, cheap designs. Naturally, they could be sold in bulk. Li Fang took a small batch of goods to try them out. In the end, just as she had expected, they sold very well. Hence, she started working furiously and continuously replenished the stock each time she finished selling the ones on hand. Mu Jingzhe also learned which designs were the best-selling ones based on the stock Li Fang replenished, and she would make adjustments accordingly. Business was roaring, and Li Fang's success gave others hope. Eldest sister Da In, La Xiao couldn't help but look for her. She said that she also wanted to take some goods from her to sell them. Furthermore, she shamelessly asked if she could just take the goods from her first, then pay her back after she sold them since they were relatives. Mu Jingzhe immediately rejected her suggestion. No, Li Fang is already selling them nearby. You will have to lower the price for the same design. I won't supply that design to anyone else. Eldest sister. In La Xiao felt that Mu Jingzhe was still unappreciative, even though she had spoken humbly to her. She was furious, and when she recalled what had happened before, she couldn't help but spit. Who doesn't know how to do this? You think I care for those hair ornaments of yours? Let me tell you something. I came to look for you because I think highly of you and wanted to give you business. You'll regret it in the future. After eldest sister got in, La Xiao left, Mu Jingzhe asked around and found out that there were people in the village who were looking to make hair ornaments and sell them. Duplication was the fastest shortcut. Since Mu Jingzhe had succeeded, the most quick dot thinking villagers naturally wanted to emulate her success. Everyone secretly tried it out, and there were indeed some people who succeeded. For example, they could replicate the early designs Mu Jingzhe had made using scraped cloth. After successfully making the replicas, they felt that it was not much. At that moment, their confidence soared and they also wanted to grab a share of the market to earn money. At first, it was fine. However, true difficulties surfaced soon. If they sold the products cheaply on the market, they could sell them but they wouldn't be able to make much money, if any. Those who tried selling them in a big city like Mu Jingzhe didn't have any success either. Even when someone finally successfully poached one of Mu Jingzhe's workers to help him, it still wasn't enough. They couldn't find as many good fabrics as Mu Jingzhe. Left with no choice but to substitute them with lousier fabrics, they realized that their end products were nowhere as good as the ones made by Mu Jingzhe. Li Xiaodi and the children were furious that one of the workers had been poached, but Mu Jingzhe was very calm. The result was just what she had expected. Like I said, there's no need to be anxious. They might think it's easy, but they have no idea that there's so much more to it than meets the eye. Everyone felt that making hair ornaments was simple as long as one knew how to make them. However, they knew nothing about things like design and color combination. With a lack of solid foundation, they could only imitate the superficial aspects of the products. 
Plus, they didn't have a keen sensitivity to color either, so how could their products compare to hers? The same applied to bracelets and necklaces. Mu Jingzhe made it seem easy because she had learned how to do it before. Although the villagers failed, it still served as a warning for Mu Jingzhe. Just because the people in the village had failed didn't mean that people elsewhere would also fail. Soon, more products would come in, and the ones she made wouldn't be irreplaceable. Mu Jingzhe spent some time coming up with a new plan. In the future, we'll mainly focus on these few products. Take a look and learn. Before these products enter the market, none of you are to leak any relevant information. You guys have also pressed your thumbprints, so you can't be careless. That the previous lesson inspired Mu Jingzhe to come up with a work contract. We know. Seeing that they all understood, Mu Jingzhe took out the new samples. The moment they were taken out, they caused a commotion. Chapter 37 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Radio Announcer Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios This time, Mu Jingzhe's designs were completely different than before. A lot of them were butterfly designs, yet they were completely different. Lace fabric was used, and the color combinations were bold, making them quite an enchanting sight. Among the new samples was also a butterfly hair clip. This time, it was no longer made of cloth but of other materials and small beads. When the wings moved, it seemed as if the butterflies were about to take flight. Little Bay's eyes lit up. Auntie, I like it so much. I want one too. I kept one for you, but you can't bring it out yet. You'll have to wait until we launch it. Little Bay nodded obediently despite her reluctance. Okay. I'll make a dragonfly one for you later. Only for you, okay. Mu Jingzhe felt her heart ache when she saw how sensible the little girl was. The children were obedient and sensible because no one had indulged them into becoming brats. After skipping a grade, Xiao Dong and Xiao Shi performed very well. Although they were the youngest, they were the most knowledgeable. Even the teachers praised them. That day, Xiao Shi said that the new language form teacher had asked to meet Mu Jingzhe at school. In the past, they used to always look for Zhao Lan whenever something came up. Ever since Mu Jingzhe had come last time, everyone had started looking for her instead and regarding her as their parent. What's the matter? Mu Jingzhe's first reaction wasn't to ask whether Xiao Shi had gotten into trouble again. His performance in the new class was pretty good. I don't know. Xiao Shi shook his head. He was quite curious but also a little nervous. After lunch, Mu Jingzhe went to school. The city is publishing a book of full dot mark essays written by primary school students. There are essays by students from all levels in it. We were notified that every school teacher can recommend a full mark essay. Last time, when we submitted Xiao Shi's re-examination essay, they said that it was very novel. I want to submit it again and give it a try. Do you consent? Mu Jingzhe's eyes lit up. Of course. The form teacher was happy to see her being so supportive. I didn't tell Xiao Shi for the time being because I was afraid that he would get his hopes up only to be disappointed. He might not be chosen. Let's give it a try. Who knows, there's a chance his essay might get chosen. It didn't matter if it didn't get chosen the first or second time, for he would definitely be chosen eventually. Mu Jingzhe was elated to see that this form teacher wasn't like Zhang Fei. All right, let's send it over then. I've already prepared it and pasted a stamp on it. You can go back and send it over. Okay. Oh right, I have to tell you something. If his essay gets chosen, there will be no royalties, but a few sample books will be sent over. I know. Mu Jingzhe understood. She felt that she could buy some children's weekly newspapers in the future and read more. If there were suitable competitions, she could get Xiao Shi to enter them. This was encouraging for Xiao Shi, as it proved his excellence. Besides, he could earn money, so why not? Mu Jingzhe was about to leave the school happily when she met the principal at the door. 
the principal was asking someone to carry some things with a broad beam. He said that the school would have a broadcast in the future. From now on, they could hold the flag dot raising ceremony every Monday and do radio dot calisthenics dot every day. While Xiaoxi's submission had to wait, Little Bei asked Mu Jingzhi something awkwardly before sleeping. Auntie, the principal says our school will have radio broadcasts now. All the schools out there have students as radio announcers, so he wants us to sign up too. I, I, do you want to give it a try? Mu Jingzhi asked. Little Bei nudged Mu Jingzhi and whispered, Can I? My Mandarin. I've only learned it from my teacher and you, auntie, as well as the tape recorder. Little Bay had a classmate who had a tape recorder at home. Her classmates loved it, and Little Bay had gone to that classmate's home to listen to it before. A tape recorder was a rare and expensive item that was only purchased when a couple got married. Playing tapes and listening to music was considered rare entertainment. Apart from song tapes, there were also some movie tapes. People living in the countryside didn't have the means to watch a movie, so they just listened to tapes. Everyone listened to movie tapes with relish, playing them so many times that they could even remember the lines sometimes. This was rare entertainment in the village, and Little Bay loved listening to those tapes. She'd even learned how to speak like the people in the tapes and could do an excellent impression of it. Little Bay wasn't confident, but Mu Jingzhi encouraged her to try. Although she wasn't sure if Little Bay would walk down the path of acting in the future, it was always good to give it a try. It would make her more versatile if she really walked down the path of acting in the future. In the book, Little Bay had excellent acting skills, and her only weakness was that the way she read her lines was lackluster. This was because she had been deaf for a significant period of time and she had not had a Mandarin foundation from a young age. She only managed to overcome those weaknesses after a lot of hard work. This time, she hoped that Little Bei wouldn't have to suffer so much. With Mu Jingzhi's encouragement, Little Bei bravely signed up. Five students signed up in total. The other four were all fifth-grade and sixth-grade students, so Little Bei was the youngest. However, the one who performed the best was Little Bei. She was still a tad shy but she was also the most daring and least nervous child. Just like that, Little Bay became a little radio announcer. Her voice echoed throughout the school and over the sky of the great eastern village. It was only a simple notice at first, but it was enough to make anyone proud. Mu Jingzhi gifted her a radio during her first broadcast. With a radio, she could listen to programs and news broadcasts. Also, it would help her learn Mandarin. L.C. At the time, radio programs were very popular. There were all sorts of programs, including children's programs, so this was quite suitable for Little Bay. Because she was poor and could not afford a new radio, she could only think of ways to buy a pre-loved one. Little Bay, you can use this for now. Auntie will replace it with a new one in the future. Mu Jingzhi was afraid that Little Bay would be unhappy, but Little Bay treasured it dearly. No need for that. Thank you, Auntie. I like it. You don't have to buy me a new one. The addition of the radio made the house even livelier. Every day, Little Bay would listen to the radio and do impressions of the voices she heard. In the past, they used to basically sleep after dark. Now, after dinner, they had a new form of entertainment and would gather together to listen to the radio. It was always good to hear more and broaden one's horizons. Also, through the radio, one could hear a lot of news from the outside world. Mu Jingzhi really needed it. She missed modern phones and the internet too much. When Xiao Qiang was at home, he would also join them. Inevitably, he had to face Little Bei's countless questions. There were many things on the radio that children found unfamiliar. Initially, Little Bei was the only one who asked Mu Jingzhi when there was something she didn't understand. If Mu Jingzhi didn't understand something, she would just say that she didn't really know, which was true. If she knew the answer, she would explain it to her. As she explained more, the children became more and more fascinated by the stories and anecdotes. 
Later on, Xiao Shi and Xiao Nan started asking questions as well, and even Xiao Dong would occasionally pose questions. While tuning into the children's channel, they heard that a few stories had been submitted by the audience. Later on, it was announced over the radio that everyone was welcome to submit their manuscript. Mu Jingzhe and Xiao Shi discussed it for a while before deciding to submit an article that they felt was suitable to the address mentioned. In the midst of this busy time, an old man in the village passed away. He was over 80 years old and had enjoyed both good fortune and longevity, as well as a prosperous family life. Since a person from the village had passed away, his relatives would all go to his funeral. Even Xiao Qiang did not go to work. He was preparing to carry the coffin on the day of the funeral. When Mu Jingzhe and Xiao Qiang brought a bunch of radishes over, they bumped into Mu Xue and Tang Moling. Upon seeing them, Mu Jingzhe quickly asked Li Xiaodi, Mom, did the Tang family come to propose marriage? When are they getting engaged? According to the storyline in the novel, the Tang family was supposed to propose marriage very soon. Unexpectedly, Li Xiaodi shook her head. I haven't heard anything. Ha! Huh. He had yet to propose marriage. Strange. Chapter 38 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Xiao Wu says his first word translator. Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios in the original novel, after dealing with the annoying Mu Jingzhe and Li Xiaodi, Tang Moling had quickly come to propose marriage. Their relationship had progressed quickly and steadily. Why hadn't he proposed marriage yet? Mu Jingzhe glanced at the male and female protagonists. She didn't notice anything amiss, but Tang Moling caught her gaze. Tang Moling looked at her with a strange expression that seemed to be filled with rage. Mu Jingzhe quickly looked away. Forget it. The relationship between the male and female lead was none of her business. Right now, she was focused on earning money to take care of the children, so she wasn't creating any trouble for Mu Shui. Even Li Xiaodi and Mu Teng were busy selling buns and didn't have time to become a nuisance. Without their hindrance, their relationship would only be smoother. Mu Jingzhe immediately turned her attention back and went to help where needed. The children had been warned by her not to run around. Mu Jingzhe was soon surrounded by several people. Now that her reputation had been restored, everyone was willing to interact with her. Xiao Wu had been following her obediently, but when Mu Jingzhe finished washing the potatoes, Xiao Wu disappeared. In the end, she saw Xiao Wu with the old trumpeter. Dot the trumpet was an instrument that was played at every wedding ceremony and funeral in the village. The villagers had invited the trumpeter, and Xiao Wu was immediately attracted by the melody the trumpet produced. Not minding the noise, he squatted in front of the old man, watching him with sparkling eyes. Xiao Wu loves to hear the trumpet. Whenever we have an event in the village and the trumpet is played, Xiao Wu will definitely be there. Seeing Mu Jingzhe's nervousness, Xiao Qiang rubbed his nose and explained. Xiao Wu looked at Mu Jingzhe and smiled, but he remained squatted, not moving an inch. Mu Jingzhe remembered that in the novel, Xiao Wu was a world.renowned top.notch musician. She nodded and said, remember to tell me where you are going next time. I got a shock when I did not know where you were. When Xiao Wu heard that Mu Jingzhe was frightened, he stood up and patted her to comfort her. If Xiao Wu wanted to listen to the trumpet, Mu Jingzhe would let him and only glance at him from time to time. She was paying attention to Xiao Wu and did not realize that she was being watched. When Xiao Qiang met Mu Shui again, he felt a tad awful. However, later, his attention was attracted by Xiao Wu and Mu Jingzhe, and he would only pay attention to her from time to time. Tang Moling had been watching Mu Shui register the gifts and speak now and then, but Mu Shui realized that Tang Moling's attention had been drawn to Mu Jingzhe some time ago. He kept glancing at her. The smile on Mu Shui's face became fainter and fainter. After she finished eating and greeted the villagers, she turned around and left. It finally occurred to Tang Moling that she was unhappy. What's wrong? Who made you unhappy again? Why are you following me? If you want to find Mu Jingzhe, then go. 
Mu Jingzhe. Why would you mention her? Haven't you been looking at her the entire time? Xiao Qiang was also paying attention to Mu Jingzhe. Tang Moling felt wronged. Didn't you see that I was glaring at her? The last time she hit me, I glared at her after I was done scolding her. These words failed to appease Mu Shui. After a moment of silence, she suddenly said, It's been so long. Why are you paying so much attention to her? This was what made her feel uneasy and unhappy. Tang Moling was stunned for a moment. I wasn't paying attention to her. I was just glaring at her. That's a form of attention too. Tang Moling, if you care so much about her, don't come looking for me again. Mu Shui bit her lip. Second aunt asked me about you before. I think she's very satisfied with you. They didn't even agree when the county driver came to propose marriage. They must be waiting for you, what kind of nonsense are you spouting, Mu Shui? What is this gibberish? Mu Shui stared at him stubbornly. I don't want to have anything snatched away from me again. I might as well not have it in the first place instead. You can leave. Don't be ridiculous. Tang Moling reflected on himself. It seemed like he had indeed been paying too much attention to Mu Jingzhe. In combination with Mu Shui's words, he suddenly realized that Mu Jingzhe had purposely said those words to attract his attention. He had experienced these tricks before. Ha! I almost fell for it. Don't worry, Xiao Shui. I won't pay attention to her ever again. Even if she dies in front of me, I won't look at her twice. Tang Moling assured both Mu Shui and himself. Elsewhere, Mu Jingzhe was making promises to Xiao Wu, alternating between intimidation and bribery. Xiao Wu, try saying it. I'll only know if you speak up. As long as you say it, I'll promise, all right. Seeing that the trumpeter was about to leave, Xiao Wu had followed him in confusion. When he'd seen Mu Jingzhe, he had taken her hand and pointed at the trumpeter anxiously. Mu Jingzhe had guessed that Xiao Wu wanted to listen more and even learn, but she pretended not to know and coaxed him into speaking. Xiao Wu started gesturing frantically but didn't say anything. Mu Jingzhe said regretfully, If you don't tell me, I won't know what you mean. Xiao Wu watched as the trumpeter walked further and further away. His eyes were red, and he looked like he was about to cry. He was usually obedient, quiet, and adorable, and he wouldn't cry easily. Such an obedient child had to be very upset to be on the verge of tears. However, Mu Jingzhe bit her lip and resisted the urge to soften her heart. Previously, she had teased Xiao Wu a lot to make him speak, but in the end, her heart would always soften against her will. Therefore, she ultimately couldn't force him to speak. She knew very well that Xiao Wu really liked this, so she had to harden her heart and force him to speak. Maybe he felt terrible right now, but this would benefit him. We're going back if you don't speak up. When Mu Jingzhe saw that Xiao Wu still wouldn't speak, she couldn't help but feel disappointed and upset. She even suspected that she hadn't done the right thing. It had been more than two months, and she had taught him so much, yet he still refused to speak. It wouldn't be good if this continued. The later he spoke, the worse it would be. In the end, he might end up like he had in his previous life and never have the chance to speak. Xiao Wu was initially depressed, but he then realized that Mu Jingzhe was in low spirits and looked as if she was feeling awful. He knew how hard Mu Jingzhe had worked during this period. Seeing her like this made Xiao Wu even more upset. He wanted to comfort Mu Jingzhe, that it was his fault, not hers. In his panic, he opened his mouth and silently moved it a few times before finally making a soft sound. Don't. It was just two words, but it seemed to have taken him a lot of effort. Beads of perspiration had formed on his forehead. Mu Jingzhe thought that she had heard wrong and quickly squatted down to look at him. Don't be sad. Under Mu Jingzhe's delighted gaze, Xiao Wu finally said a complete sentence to express what he wanted to say. He even imitated how Mu Jingzhe used to comfort him and patted her shoulder. I said, don't be sad. 
because he had never spoken before, his voice was actually unpleasant. But Xiao Wu had spoken. He had spoken. Mu Jingzhe, who was overjoyed, picked Xiao Wu up. Xiao Wu, you've spoken. That's awesome. Seeing that Mu Jingzhe was happy, Xiao Wu finally relaxed. Speak. I keep my promises. Xiao Wu, tell me what you want. I'll agree to anything you say. Xiao Wu's eyes lit up. Learn. He made a gesture of blowing a trumpet and emphasized learning again. So Xiao Wu likes the trumpet and wants to learn how to play it. Xiao Wu nodded vigorously. Mm, -hmm, all right, go learn then. Mu Jingzhe had to keep her word. Chapter 39 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Attacked from the Back Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios Everyone was glad that Xiao Wu could finally speak. Little Bei exclaimed, so Xiao Wu is really not mute. After saying that, she started to teach Xiao Wu to call her sister. Xiao Shi joined in and asked Xiao Wu to call him brother. The duo started quarreling over whether Xiao Wu should say brother or sister first. In the end, even Xiao Dong, who rarely spoke, opened his mouth to teach Xiao Wu to call him brother. Xiao Dong felt a little guilty that Xiao Wu was only learning how to speak now. In the past, he had been afraid that his stutter would be passed on to Xiao Wu, so he'd rarely taught him to speak. If he had thought of a way earlier, Xiao Wu might have started speaking long ago. With this thought in mind, Xiao Dong simply taught Xiao Wu to call him brother, but in the end, he still stuttered. Noel.n Xiao Dong's expression froze. A second later, though, Xiao Wu called him brother loudly. Little Bei stomped her feet in dissatisfaction, but Xiao Wu smiled at Xiao Dong and greeted him again. Big brother. He liked big brother the most. Xiao Wu then obediently called Little Bei sister, successfully coaxing her. In the end, Xiao Qiang couldn't help but join in and ask Xiao Wu to call him uncle. Instead of doing that, Xiao Wu went on to address Mu Jingzhe first. He didn't say, auntie. He only managed to utter one syllable. Ant. At first, they thought it was an interjection. Xiao Qiang was the last to be greeted, but he was very satisfied nonetheless. In the middle of the night, Xiao Qiang could not help going to his older brother's tombstone to have a chat with him. Second brother, you can leave with peace of mind. Now that Xiao Wu can speak, he's no longer mute. The days ahead will get better and better. I'll take good care of them. He did not specify which of them were included. Since Xiao Wu had spoken, Mu Jingzhe kept her word. The next day, she took some eggs to the trumpeter's house and asked him to teach Xiao Wu. Seeing that she was sincere and Xiao Wu was likable, the teacher agreed readily. Two days later, Mu Jingzhe would pick up Xiao Wu again. Although he was still young, he could already replicate the trumpeter's songs and even create new ones. At the sight of Mu Jingzhe, Xiao Wu's eyes lit up. He immediately showed her what he had learned, blowing the trumpet while facing her. Mu Jingzhe. She seemed to have heard the words, off you go. She gazed at Xiao Wu, who seemed to know his way around playing the trumpet, and suddenly remembered that Xiao Wu was a musician who played the piano, cello, and violin according to the book. He was known as the Prince of Music. Right now, the Prince of Music or whatever didn't exist yet. He was just a gleeful trumpet kid. He merrily played a funeral song on the trumpet for her. Was he sending her off? Mu Jingzhe was in a daze. She suddenly wondered how his fans would react and they found out that the first instrument the Prince of Music had learned was the trumpet. It wasn't like trumpets were bad, but most people were under the impression that this musical instrument had a very special use. Even though these random thoughts were running through Mu Jingzhe's mind, on the surface, she clapped her hands and praised Xiao Wu for learning well. She then couldn't help but stroke Xiao Wu's head. This had become her favorite thing to do recently. Xiao Wu's hair was curly and soft, so it felt very good to the touch and had a therapeutic effect. 
Mu Jingzhe took advantage of this opportunity to stroke his head while she had the chance. Xiao Wu didn't hate it either. He let her touch his head and said with a red face, Aunt, I also want to learn how to play the flute. Thanks to Mu Jingzhe's encouragement, Xiao Wu mustered up the courage to speak. The bamboo flute was also one of the instruments available in the village. The reason was that the villagers could make them on their own, and the cost was low. There was also a bamboo flute player in the village. Mu Jingzhe nodded in surprise. All right, go ahead and learn it. Xiao Wu immediately went to learn the flute and then said that he wanted to learn the eru. The eru was also a common musical instrument among common folks. There was only one eru in the village. Mu Jingzhe nodded again. Xiao Wu was very enthusiastic, and even a leaf became his instrument. It was just a small leaf, but he could produce a beautiful melody by using it. It wasn't a tune that everyone had heard before, but something he'd casually played. Everyone in the village liked to listen to it, for it made them feel happy and comfortable. Just like that, Xiao Wu learned all the musical instruments available in the village. Mu Jingzhe occasionally felt that this development was a little strange. However, she convinced herself that music was interlinked. Who said that the piano, the cello, and the guitar were the most elegant instruments? The trumpet and the eru were also invincible. There was nothing wrong with learning these traditional musical instruments that had been passed down for generations. She could always let Xiao Wu learn how to play the piano, violin, and cello in the future. There was no harm in being armed with more skills. Before the first day of June, Mu Jingzhe met Little Bei's new form teacher, who asked her opinion on allowing Little Bei to participate in a competition. It was only then that Mu Jingzhe found out that the town had informed every school that they could apply to participate on the 1st of June. Show. The participants would first compete in their town, and then the first dot place winner would be chosen to participate in the cultural performance of the county. The school had wanted to organize a big choir, but none of them had learned about it early, so it had turned out to be a mess. Plus, they didn't have uniforms, and most families didn't have the money to make new clothes either. Thus, they'd given up on the idea. Later on, since that hadn't worked out, they decided to have Little Bay represent the school and recite a poem. The important thing was to participate, so they asked her to discuss it with her parents. However, Little Bay had never told Mu Jingzhe about this. The reason Little Bay had not said anything was because she felt that she could not win the competition by reciting a poem. If she wanted to compete, she might have to buy new clothes and shoes. Thinking it would be expensive, she did not want to go. Mu Jingzhe felt very helpless. How should she put it? It was not okay for children to not have a concept of money, but if they had too strong a concept of money at such a young age and were constantly thinking of saving money, it would make an adult's heart ache for them. Isn't it just a new dress? It's very simple. You know that I know how to make one. It's not expensive at all, so go ahead and participate. It doesn't matter if you don't win. The important thing is to participate. Participating in competitions could boost one's courage and increase one's knowledge. Why not? Little Bay actually did wish to go, so her eyes lit up when she heard that. Then. Then I'll participate. Of course you can. But I think simply reciting poetry is kind of dull. Then what do you want to do? I want to do something interesting. In the end, Little Bay signed up for it. However, she did not recite a poem. Instead, she created her own performance by doing impressions. Xiao Nan wrote a cute story for his younger sister. Xiao Wu, the only person who did not have to go to school, acted alongside his older sister. Mu Jingzhe also provided her with the greatest support. Before Children's Day, Little Bei represented the school at the competition. In the end, she clinched first place with her innovative work, which allowed her to represent the town at the county competition. When they arrived at the county, they found out that the cultural performance this time was quite important. Even people from the city came. 
they heard that students who showed potential could get a chance to study in a specialized art school. The art school was under the radio station. There were children's music, calligraphy, art, and dancing classes, and so on. There were even acting and hosting classes. They specialized in training child actors, young show hosts, and little dancers. The school had a collaboration with the radio station. When they needed young talent for programs, galas, and even other festivals, the radio station would contact the art school. The higher dot ups were planning to open a school in the county to groom potential talent. Those who performed well in the joint performance could enroll in the school. When Mu Jingzhe heard about this, she was very surprised. This was not the modern era, when there were all sorts of art schools for one to choose from. In this time and age, it was difficult to study the arts, so this was a perfect opportunity for Little Bay. The performance started at night, and a rehearsal was held during the day so the participants could familiarize themselves with the routine. Mu Jingzhe had been watching without resting, and she only had time to go to the toilet after she took Little Bei and Xiao Wu to the resting lounge. She had planned on buying food originally. However, she was attacked the moment she emerged from the bathroom. Mu Jingzhe had never thought that someone would attack her in public. When she finally reacted, she felt a sharp pain at the back of her neck before blacking out. Chapter 40 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Who's the Pervert Translator? Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios' Ji Buwang had been unconscious for four years and had only woken up a few days ago. Four years had passed, and everything was different. After a period of recovery, these days he would walk around and take a breather. The news of him waking up was not publicized. Anyway, those who visited him personally would know. It was fine if everyone did not know, for they would find out eventually. After staying in his hometown for two days, he passed by and saw a cultural performance. He remembered hearing that his niece would be performing at this event and decided to come and take a look since he was bored. Apart from cute little kids, he had not expected to see a pervert entering the ladies' room. He had heard of peeping toms in ladies' toilets, but this was the first time he had seen a man enter the ladies' toilets in such a brazen manner. It was with heaven's blessings that he had managed to wake up, so he had to be a good person and do good deeds to repay that. He naturally couldn't ignore such a thing now that he had come across it. Ji Bu Wang went forward without any hesitation and knocked that person out. I almost didn't succeed. I still have to train and recover my strength. Ji Go gazed at the pervert lying on the ground and wanted to call for help. However, there was no one around, so he decided to drag her to the side so she would not get in the way. When he bent down and tried to drag the person by the armpits, Ji Buang felt that something was amiss. Why was it so soft? What was this sensation? Ji Buang couldn't help but squeeze. This sudden attack had made Mu Jingzhe faint before she could react. Eventually, the pain woke her up. As soon as she woke up, Mu Jingzhe couldn't help but swear. Damn it, I actually met a pervert. And he had been so eager to start. Mu Jingzhe was furious. Her flat chest had been through too many hardships. Previously, she had been hit by a rock and now, she had been subjected to this. It just so happened that right now, she was also in pain because she was on her period. As the owner of those boobs, she had to avenge herself. She had to teach this pervert a lesson. Amidst the sparks, Mu Jingzhe grabbed that evil hand and threw a punch. The gangster fainted. Mu Jingzhe touched the back of her neck, which was still in pain, and called for security to tie him up. To think a crook had actually sneaked into the cultural performance. It would be terrible if this guy went on to harm or even abduct little kids. She had to get to the bottom of this. Otherwise, she would take him to the police station. In order to prevent him from hurting anyone, she tied his hands up before pinching his dot filtrum in TV shows, people were woken up by getting drenched with a bucket of water. In reality, it was more convenient to pinch them by their filtrum, as it evoked a quicker response. Ji Buang quickly woke up. 
When he saw the scene, his first reaction was to think that he had been kidnapped. What do you people want? We haven't asked you what you're doing, the security guard said righteously. Tell us honestly what you've done. Other than good deeds, what else could I have done? Upon seeing Mu Jingzhe beside him, he was furious. How dare you capture me instead of that pervert? The two security guards and Mu Jingzhe looked at each other. We are arresting a pervert. You. They despised people who molested women. The two security guards looked at him in disdain. Ji Buang. Who's the pervert? When he saw the hand that was pointing at him, Ji Buang sneered. A pervert. Him. He laughed in anger and accused Mu Jingzhe of trickery. You're a thief crying out to stop another thief. He's the pervert. I saw him enter the lady's room with my own eyes. Mu Jingzhe. If I don't enter the lady's room, where should I go? Brother, are you short dot sighted? Wasn't this too much? Her hair was just a tad short. Although she wasn't wearing a skirt, she wasn't wearing a male outfit either. Even if she was a little flat, she still had feminine curves. Mu Jingzhe lowered her head to look at herself. All right, it wasn't very obvious. But anyone with eyes could tell that she was a woman, right? Why did she have to suffer such an unexpected calamity? Mu Jingzhe stared at the man suspiciously. He looked like a decent human being, but why was there something wrong with his eyes and brain? Or was he pretending? Ji Bu Wang was completely dumbfounded. Why? Why is your voice so feminine? Mu Jingzhe couldn't help but roll her eyes. Because I'm a woman to begin with. Brother, if you're short dot sighted, you ought to get yourself a pair of glasses. I just have shorter hair. That's right. If you look closely, you'll be able to tell she's a lady. The security guard agreed. Ji Bu Wang. Dot. To think this was actually a girl. Then what he had touched previously was. Ji Bu Wang was shocked. What had he done? Ji Bu Wang was in a state of shock. Heat emanated from his hand toward his entire body, making him feel boiling hot. Besides, his mind insisted on recalling that sensation against his will. Ji Bu Wang pushed these thoughts away with all his might and cursed himself for being a hooligan. S. Sorry, Ji Bu Wang's face turned red as he apologized. My eyesight is bad, so I misunderstood. I'm sorry, he no longer dared to look at Mu Jingzhe. Mu Jingzhe. So the reason she had been knocked out and subjected to that treatment was because he had bad eyesight and she had short hair. The pain in Mu Jingzhe's chest was still there, but she couldn't go forward and take revenge. There was nothing to pinch anyway. Her chest looked really flat. Mu Jingzhe awkwardly retracted her gaze. So you didn't do it on purpose? Of course not. Although Mu Jingzhe was speechless, she did not insist on sending him to the police station after the misunderstanding was cleared up. The freed Ji Bu Wang stood in front of her, no longer looking as pathetic as before. He looked sincere and convincing. He was thin and he was wearing a white shirt paired with a suit and suspenders. He looked clean and neat, and he had a hint of a cultured and elegant yet ruffian dotish air. He gave off the vibe of a senior at school during the 1920s. His facial features were exquisite. With a combination of the look of a man and a woman, he looked both very handsome and pretty. Mu Jingzhe couldn't help but think of a modern male celebrity. His skin was very fair, and his hair was curly and longer than Mu Jingzhe's. This was the first time Mu Jingzhe had seen such hair in real life. There were many people with naturally curly hair, but this color was slightly yellow, and his hair curled as if it had been specially styled. This hairstyle gave off a modern sense of fashion, as if it was from the modern era. It might not stand out so much in the modern age, when plenty of fashionable people walked in the streets, but in this day and age, it was extremely eye-dot-catching. It was the sort of thing that caught people's attention at first glance. 
If it hadn't been for the previous incident, Mu Jingzhe would probably have felt very close to him. Okay, now he looked a little familiar too. Eddie E. first of all, his hair resembled Xiao Wu's hair. Secondly, it had a modern vibe. However, Mu Jingzhe knew that this person was truly from this era. Just look at how he treated her like a man just because of her short hair. I hope you could look more closely next time. In the future, more and more girls will have short hair, and there will also be boys with long hair. Don't assume that a person with short hair must be a man and someone with long hair must be a woman. This kind of distinction is too narrow. Minded. Ji Buang. Yes, I'll be more careful. Though he agreed, he felt bitter in his heart. Guys had long hair, while this girl had short hair. What was he to do? I'm leaving first. Remember to go get a pair of glasses. Mu Jingzhe reminded him when she saw his good attitude. Ji Buang smiled bitterly. If only a pair of glasses could remedy this. His eyes weren't something glasses could save. After smiling bitterly, he suddenly realized that he had not asked for her name. Wait, I forgot to ask for your name. My name is Ji Buang. Let's get to know each other. Ji Buang chased after her. My name is Mu Jingzhe. I have other matters to attend to, so I'll leave now. We'll talk again when we have the chance. Goodbye. Mu Jingzhe, who was eager to go back to Little Bay, waved her hand and then left directly. She didn't think they would meet again. I, Ji Buang watched Mu Jingzhe walk away, wanting to say something, but stopped himself. He still had something to say. Although this was not ancient times, his actions had taken away the girl's innocence. But since he had done that sort of thing, should he, take responsibility for what he had done? Or compensate her?